Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So we'll be continuing from the previous tutorial on WebCode. So WebCode is a vulnerable web application system and we actually stop at lesson number four. So we'll move on into lesson number five of SQL injection intro. So go ahead and click on number five. All right, so over here we have what we call data control language, right? So it is used to create privileges to allow users to access and manipulate different parts of the database. All right, and of course over here, we have SQL injection that could help us do, for example, granting of users accesses to different parts of the database, revoking certain privileges of the user using the revoke command. All right, so of course over here, we have an example, All right? So grant create table to a specific operator. So this allows the operator to create tables inside the database system. And of course here, what we are going to do as an exercise to grant the user group unauthorized user the right to alter tables. Okay, so there is such an instruction that allow us to do so. So over here, we have what we call grant alter table to unauthorized user. So go ahead and paste that here. So what we do is we are granting all right, the privilege to alter tables inside the database system and we are providing this authority to unauthorized user. So go ahead and click submit and we would have congratulations. All right, congratulations, we have successfully completed the assignment. Okay, so this is granting of the privileges to users to different parts of the database or to different commands, issuance of commands. So going to lesson number six, so now we have understood about what are some of the fundamental structured query language instructions. We can now move on to SQL injection. Okay, and this is what we are trying to do here as part of the tutorial is how can we bypass the Boolean operators, the logic of the database system and trying to gain access, all right, into the database, pull out specific records, pull out the entire table of information and so on, okay? And this happens when input are not sanitized. So allowing hackers to bypass the original intention of those applications that are used for input forms, that are used to do searching, authentication. So we have examples of SQL injection over here. So we have the SQL query to retrieve user information from the database, okay? So this is how all right, a web application server would call the database to retrieve information. So we have select all from users where name equal. So this, all right, allow them to enter, for example, the username. And then after which the username is inserted from the browser into the web application server and into the database to retrieve those records. And for example, over here, we have the variable username holds the input from the client injects it into the query. So we have select from users where name is specifically over here so for example all right so this is really a wonderful instruction and demonstration of how it looks like okay so if we enter for example smith all right it actually help us fill in the information here and we can see select all from users when name is equal to smith so immediately we'll be able to pull out information for this particular role and over here okay so what the hackers can do is they can perform further information attack into that input form. So here, for example, we have Smith and we have a single quote. So this ends the instruction here. And what happens is we can enter or, okay, followed by single quote one equal single quote one. All right, so this ends the instruction. Okay, so over here, select all from users when name is equal to Smith or one is equal to one. So what does this mean? All right, so this will return all entries from the users table, why? Because or one equal one will always be true. And if it is always true, it means that we'll always get a result back coming in from the system. Okay, so over here, likewise again, okay, we have a second one, all right, Smith, all right, or one equal one, followed by semicolon and double, double dash, all right. So what this means is that we will actually also help return us all forms of entries from the users table and the second the last one over here the third one smith and then we end the sql query and we open up a new query drop table users okay so this would delete away all those user database all right all the the users table and finally we have truncate all right audit lock followed by double dash again and again the purpose of the double dash is to command out every other query instructions that come after all right 
the semicolon. Alright, so that's the whole idea of double dash. Okay, so this again help us chain multiple SQL commands and deletes the users table as well as entries from the audit log. Okay, so now let us go ahead and move on to lesson number seven. Okay, so consequences of SQL injection. All right, a SQL injection once it manages to bypass the intended use of the SQL query or our structured query, it can help us shut down the database, pull out records, add users, do all sorts of data manipulation revoking of user granting of permissions and so on all right so they can spoof data tamper of existing data and all these things that they could literally really take control of the database itself okay so we can go to lesson eight now and severity all right severity of sql injection so how can we control it all right so it depends on the attack scale so a lot of times if you look at the previous tutorials and we were targeting the metasploitable as well as the DVWA, we were able to input all the SQL injection. And SQL injection works not just for web application systems, it could also work for mobile applications. Ultimately, mobile applications have to connect to some sort of database system or a application server via application programming interfaces that will then connect to a database system. So either way, we still have to query into database system, pull out records, cross-check records, and they can also be subjected to SQL attacks, okay? SQL injection attacks. And of course, we also have different types of databases. So you have Microsoft Access, MySQL, Oracle databases, Microsoft SQL databases. And what we can do is of course, depending on the database type, we will also need to amend and adjust our instructions accordingly as we put in the SQL injection into the systems, all right? And it can also be more common in PHP system, classic ASP, Cold Fusion, and some of the older languages where they do not try to sanitize the input or have some form of protection against those type of attacks, okay? All right, so moving on to lesson number nine. All right, so we are gonna do a string SQL injection. Okay, so over here, we have the idea of how the SQL queries run, right? So we have select all from user data where first name is John and last name. Okay, so the user will input the last name. So this is the input box that would come in from the attacker or from the user. All right, so over here, we have select all from user. Okay, so John and we have Smith. All right, so what we're trying to do is to pull out all those records. So if I click on get account info, okay, it says no results match. So we have to find out in what ways are we able to get those details. All right, so over here I already created and save those details for us so we have a smith followed by a single code or okay one equal one okay so over here smith with a single code so what this does is that it ends all right it ends the structured query language here and then over here with or one equal one so what we got to do is to have single code for one equals single code one all right so go ahead and click get account info and once you do so all right we'll be able to get the details of the of all of the query table okay so over here this is the one so get account info you have succeeded user id first name last name credit card number credit card type cookies and login counts all these details are being pulled out immediately once you run the attack okay so over here on the left side with the user id so again as mentioned earlier in the previous tutorial behind every web application system mobile application you have like a excel sheet that's running all right so it's 2d row and columns and we can see all of those details over here all right so moving on to lesson number 10 okay in lesson 10 so we have numeric sql injection okay numeric sql injection in this case all right it gives us a warning so of course the ultimate goal is to retrieve all the data from the users table and we're warning only one of these fields is susceptible to sql injection you need to find out which to successfully retrieve all the data all right so i have login count so i can enter for example one and then followed by user ID one and click get account info. So we're just testing out what is the normal expected behavior from the web application system as we inject different kind of payloads. All right, so this is important as a, as a start about understanding what's the purpose of the input form, okay? And moving on, all right, so we can see over here, all this is what we call numeric SQL injection. Okay, so what can we do next? So I've already created payload here. All right, so we have, for example, one or Okay, single code one, single code equal, single code one, followed by single code again. All right, so let's copy this details. All right, the payload. 
And the idea is we're just trying to check, all right, which of this is actually vulnerable. Is it a login count or is it the user ID? So we got two input, input forms. So we need to test which one of them is susceptible. So go ahead and click get account info. Okay, it says could not pass. And then if I do on the second user ID, click get account info. All right, so we got an error message. So error messages are also very important as part of the response coming in from your payloads. All right, so your payloads get injected and it could show us whether they are vulnerable or not. Okay, so taking count of the error messages is going to be important as part of validating whether this SQL injection will work or not. All right, so now we can go ahead and enter the following and click get account info. All right, so we have identified, of course, user ID is the one that is susceptible to a SQL injection. So that, which is why we put our payload into the user ID, whereas the login count, we continue to place a proper input into the login count, which is not susceptible to the attack. All right, so over here immediately, we are able to get the whole table, our user ID, first name, last name, credit card number, credit card type, cookie, login count, and all these different data points. Okay, so all this, the entire table of information has been retrieved. All right, so with that, we're gonna pause here and we will continue with this tutorial in the subsequent video. Okay, so once again, I hope you've learned something valuable. And if you like what you've just watched, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.